Let religion be to us life and joy. Let it be a voice of renewing challenge to the best we have and that we may be. Let religion be to us the wonder and the lure of that which is only partly known and understood. Let it be to us hope and purpose and a discovering of opportunities to express our best through daily ideals and tasks. Religion uniting us with all that is admirable in human beings everywhere. A prospect of the better life for humankind, which each may help to make actual. These words are an actual or a slight adaptation from hymn 466. And I chose them because all of the above and more are perhaps just some of the reasons why you, Reverend Nicole McKay, pursue this honorable profession. It is my honor and great pleasure to welcome you this morning as Reverend Nicole McKay. Every day, we are presented with the invitation to embrace the complexity and diversity of the world around us. As Unitarian Universalists, we recognize that there are many, many paths to truth and meaning. And we celebrate the paradoxes and contradictions that make life so rich and interesting. I was sitting around a table this week with some of my spiritual care students and some colleagues. We were reflecting on the intersection of our work and our identities. This is when an imam colleague shared, to know my God is to know myself, and to know myself is to know my God. He reminded us of an important truth, that the work we do in self-awareness is key to understanding the sacred, no matter how we define it. At the same time, when we spend time with the mystery of the holy, we also come to know ourselves as part of the whole. In that moment, he brought together the human and divine in a way that allowed us to live into the paradox of our lives. The same one that makes space for questions and our search for meaning. I would argue that this is the practice of religion. In Christianity, the paradox of the sacred and secular arises from the tension between the call to be in the world, but not of the world. In Buddhism, the paradox of the sacred and secular arises in the tension between the ultimate reality of emptiness and the relative reality of the world of phenomena. In Hinduism, the paradox shows up in the tension between the ultimate reality of Brahman and the relative reality of world appearances. No matter our perspective, religion and spirituality calls us to find a way to live in the world without being consumed by it. To engage in a world in a way that is both skillful and compassionate. In the context of spirituality, 
Paradoxes can be seen as a way to transcend dualistic styles of thinking, to embrace the complexity of existence. So for example, in the Christian tradition, which speaks of the paradox of the cross, where Jesus is both a symbol of death and suffering and the path to redemption and new life. This is also in the Buddhist tradition where we encounter emptiness, where the absence of inherent existence in all is both a source of freedom and a challenge to our sense of self. When we embrace this paradox, it can help us lead better lives by expanding our thinking, challenging our assumptions, promoting personal growth and development. According to a study published by the American Journal of Psychoanalysis, these paradoxical experiences can lead to personal growth and transformation in particular during times of crisis. They ask us to shift our worldview. When we embrace these seemingly contradictory ideas and experiences, we can develop a more nuanced and complex understanding of the world and our place in it. If we are to adopt a hermeneutic of paradox, taking that lens and applying it to our everyday lives, it can lead to greater creativity and innovation. And so instead of seeing obstacles and demands, individuals who embrace paradox understand them to be opportunities and growth for learning. In my military world, we coined a term for this on one of my courses, and we called it crisitunity, uh -huh. where the crisis becomes sort of that, that garden bed for opportunity. And are we able to understand it from that perspective? When we do this, it leads to effective problem solving, greater adaptability, and even improved performance. As we engage with paradox, we promote greater self-awareness and emotional intelligence, both of which are essential to that personal growth. Recognizing those contradictions within ourselves and in the world around us, we develop a deeper understanding of our own values, beliefs, our motivations, and cultivate greater empathy and compassion for others. In the realm of psychology, paradoxical thinking has been used as a therapeutic technique, one to help individuals break free from rigid patterns of thought and behavior. I know this because I use it with my students. In teaching new spiritual care providers, we engage with this paradox because it opens ourselves to new insights. One student experienced this this week. He had visited a couple, one of whom was at the end of life. And in presenting this case to us, he said, I could never ask them directly why they had two different experiences of grief. And yet in his avoidance of the question, that inner reaction, he never asked them the one thing they really needed in that moment. So the growth comes from his reaction, recognizing what was telling him to push the brakes. Because in asking that difficult question, he missed the necessary intervention. And so by embracing the opposite of what he would feel or believe, he gained new perspective and an ability to find a creative solution to the problem. Of course, these stories are taking, 
these stories come from all of our lives and they come from all of the religious traditions as well. So I'm gonna share one uh, from the Buddha, from the Buddhist tradition. The Buddha was asked to provide one of these creative solutions for a woman who was in grief. This young woman had just given birth to a baby boy. She was overjoyed at the birth of her son, but her happiness was short-lived when her baby fell ill and died. Overcome with grief and despair, she refused to believe that her son was dead and she carried his body from house to house, asking if anyone could bring him back to life. Everyone told her that they could not help her. Finally, she knocked on the door and was greeted with the Buddha. And she asked the Buddha, could you bring my son back to life? The Buddha told her no. He could not bring her son back to life, but he could help her find a way to deal with her grief. He asked her to go into the village to find a mustard seed from the house where no one had experienced loss of a loved one. And so with great devotion, she went from house to house, but she could find not a single household where someone had not experienced the pain of losing a loved one. That is when she learned that suffering is a universal experience, that she was not alone in her grief. And she returned to the Buddha and became a disciple finding solace and peace in the teachings of Buddhism. These sufferings and losses are inevitable, inevitable parts of our lives. They can also be a great source of growth and transformation. When we accept the reality of suffering and recognize our interdependence with all beings, we find compassion and wisdom, sometimes even joy in the midst of pain and difficulty. You may have recognized this, but our faith is also filled with paradox one of which is between our commitment to individual freedom and our desire to live in interconnected, beloved community. Each person here is charged with the responsibility to search for truth and meaning in a way that is authentic to them. We value the right of each person to follow their own path and make their own choices. And at the same time, in the same breath, we agree to journey with one another in spiritual growth, recognizing that we are beloved community. In this community of individuals, what you have to share about your search, as personal as it is, can actually help me with mine. This is not an easy paradox to resolve, and it is essential to our growth and development in a spiritual sense. We must learn to balance our individual needs with those of the community and recognize that our freedom is completely bound with that of one another. And these last few years, it has invited us to build community in ways we had not even imagined. We recognize that our congregations are not about our physical spaces, they're the people. And therefore, when we gather in these multi-platform ways, hi people online, we are making a theological statement that the gathering of community of people is not bound to the rules of time and space. What matters is the care that we hold for one another. 
And this is what we practice in our ritual of joys and sorrows. What makes this ritual significant is the intention behind it in which we recognize that those joys and sorrows as we heard this morning, they are not divided, they intertwine. So when we are experiencing struggles, it doesn't mean that our life is devoid of joy. This is part of our service that allows us to honor that complexity, to be expansive in our minds as well as our hearts. As people committed to science and reason, we must also grapple with our desire for certainty, for data, while also recognizing the limits of human knowledge. This is where our first source, we read the principles, the direct experience of mystery and wonder, it makes room for us to grow beyond facts, to know truth and an experiential and embodied knowing. It means that we must reconcile ourselves with knowing we will never know all there is to know. This living in paradox is challenging to say the least. And it is also liberating. We are free to explore and question and challenge our assumptions and beliefs, to embrace the mystery and wonder of the universe. Liberation is what we are seeking as a faith tradition. And so this means learning to live in the paradox. It is how we will transcend the dualism, which is necessary to achieve freedom for all, which paradoxic paradoxically starts with each individual person. This is what helps us lead lives of integrity as we are challenged to think more deeply, to engage with creativity, to foster greater self-awareness and emotional intelligence. It is in this liberation that we find the grace of our faith. Here is our encounter with mystery and possibility and promise. It is what opens the space for forgiveness when we do not live into our highest aspirations. And it is what invites us to listen attentively to the stories and lived experiences of others and recognize them as truth. Tao Te Ching reminds us, if you want to become whole, let yourself be partial. If you want to become straight, let yourself be crooked. If you want to become full, let yourself be empty. If you want to be reborn, let yourself die. If you want to be given everything, give up everything. We must learn to live with paradox, with uncertainty and doubt. We must embrace the complexity and diversity of the world around us and recognize that there are no easy answers or simple solutions. But if we are willing to embrace this paradox of life, we can find meaning and purpose and joy in the midst of that mystery. May we all have the courage to live with paradox, to embrace the challenges and opportunities that it presents. And so my friends, let us live in the multiplicity of it all. May it be so, blessed be and amen. So I understand that we have shifted things a little bit here and I'm gonna go with that flow. So I'm going to invite us to find a comfortable posture for meditation.
in this faith, the sermon or the talk tends to be at the center where someone else is sharing their version of truth. And what I hope you will do in this time is to connect with your own. So I invite you just to pay attention to your body and your breath as it is and no need to change it. Perhaps you can feel yourself being pulled down towards the earth, that beautiful gravity that keeps life going. And at the same time, that is Mother Earth holding you. Let yourself rest into that space. As we reflect getting closer to the end of the congregational year, we're going to look back for a moment. Perhaps there was a time this year where in this beloved community, you experienced heartbreak. And so as that heartbreak was taking place, I wonder, was your heart also broken open, making space for more love? This year has also offered many opportunities to be in service to others here and in the wider world. How are you in service? And in that time of serving others, what did you find about yourself?
as we hold the complexity of all that has arisen for us in this time of reflection. I invite us to wiggle our toes and our fingers, to become aware of the physical spaces in which we are at 18 Winford or in our homes or other places scattered around the world. to bring our awareness and our attention into this space and this time. And so in the practice of this community, with our hearts open to surprise, May we engage in dialogue. <laughs> 